Today I'm going to show you how you can install hard drives into your system. Simple SATA hard drives in your computer. Well, welcome to Gymodism Total Nerdery channel. Let's begin. Let us now insert the hard drive into the system. Turn off your computer and make sure it's turned off completely. When the computer is off, you may remove the screws and remove one side of the chassis. Inside the computer, the hard drive can be located anywhere, but they are usually located down here in this tray. Here you can see my current hard drive. It is connected with power and a SATA cable. The power is provided from your power supply. It looks like this. You need to provide a SATA cable. It looks like this. It doesn't matter if it's rated for SATA 1, 2 or 3 as long as it has this format. They all have the same speeds. What does matter however is the SATA connection on your motherboard. If it's SATA 3 or SATA Express, it is the faster type. However, DVD and CD players may use SATA 1 or SATA 2. If you put a hard drive to a SATA port that usually goes to a DVD, it will work fine. But it will be limited in speed, so you want to select the fastest SATA slots for hard drives, which is SATA 3 or SATA Express, which is present on basically all motherboards. Usually there is some kind of large SATA bus, like here. And there we have installed the SATA cable in the SATA Express or SATA 3 slot. Just read on the motherboard and you can see the SATA rating on the provided slot. And there we have our hard drive. So, cases are usually provided with trays. So, put the hard drive in a tray. Just like this. This will help a little bit with vibration and will set it securely in the case. Here we have the power. You will connect the power, just like that. Here we have the SATA cable we just inserted. We'll connect it in as well. And we push it into the tray, just like that. And there we have it. We can now close the case and proceed. Now when it started the computer you can see we got this error reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media in selected boot device and press a key. Usually when you install a new hard drive it's fresh and never used and in most cases it just boots but sometimes it won't uh, and if you have an old hard drive that may have an operative system you will always need to go into BIOS and select the proper boot device. So we'll turn off the computer We'll turn it on again. Click F12 or other key provided to get to the boot menu. Now inside the boot menu you can select the Windows Boot Manager. We'll select the Windows Boot Manager on the SSD which is the proper drive. The other Windows Boot Manager is an operative system that already exists on the hard drive we put in. So we'll select this one. So we'll click delete to go into BIOS. Different BIOSes look a little bit different, but basically we can go to BIOS features or something uh, called boot options, find the boot options. We will have the Windows Boot Manager. We'll select that on our SSD, which is the drive we want to use. And then we'll click save and exit. So, we have installed our hard drive and the system, we have successfully booted and now we'll need to make something to be able to use it. And it's very simple. Hold Windows key and click R, so you write in run and then you'll write in disk disk mgmt dot msc. Enter. Here we have it. 
This is the disk management tool. To utilize this space here, because this on disk one is our new hard drive we've put in the system currently and we will need to create volume to even use this. And it's very simple. If however, this hard drive has been used by someone else before, you'll need to delete all partitions if they already have partitions or maybe even data on it. You'll need to definitely delete that. If you have to reselect a boot option when you try to restart your computer, it may have been the case that it has an earlier operating system on it. And if you need to delete all partitions, please watch my video, which should be in the description or otherwise in my tech tutorial play playlist on how to delete all partitions on a hard drive, because you'll need to use command prompt. Anyways, let's get into it. So how do we do? What we do is we create a simple volume. That's the most best thing to do. Just click next. And here we have maximum space. You can select how much you want of it to be um, used and I'll set this to max. But if this is an SSD, I would leave around 10% uh, unallocated to basically make the SSD both faster and live longer. But this is a regular hard drive, so we're just gonna use all the space. Then we'll click next. You can select the drive letter. You may use any one you like. We're gonna use X just for the fun of it. And then you'll just uh, click next. If you will use this uh, disk for like Mac or some very old systems, you might want to format it in XFAT, but it's kind of inefficient. So for all Windows users, please select NTFS. If you have, uh, you know, Windows 2000 or newer, I suppose. So anyways, uh, allocation size unit, you can absolutely leave this at default. The default is usually 4000. But uh, in some cases, you want to use it as lower or higher. If you have real issue of fitting all the stuff on your SSD, you might put it on minimum, but it will also then be slower. If you put it on maximum, it will be faster to browse through the hard drive, but you will be able to save less data on it if you have small files, like for example, if you will install an operating system on it. So. Usually, if you don't know or are not certain, just select default. If there is going to be a lot of small files on your computer, a lower allocation unit size might be better. If you're going to have large files on it, like for example, all the files are larger than one megabyte, then you might put it on max. Usually default is absolutely fine, but on this particular hard drive, I will only save movies pictures, music, so I'm going to select it as max allocation unit size. Now this will make it slightly faster to, to search, but it's not going to be a significant difference. So default is fine, is what I'm going to tell you. You can choose a custom name for your volume, which is fun. You can either select to perform a quick format or not. Usually quick format is absolutely fine. If you would get into some type of issue, you could try and do uh, uncheck this box and try again. Then just click next and finish. The drive is now getting formatted. It will take a little time or very fast. And here we have it. We have a, you know, beautiful hard drive. We can make new folders and store big files, like a really big text, do text document, like this one, for example. Absolutely fantastic. Save the file. We are now going to have this beautiful hard drive. Fantastic. So there you have it. That's the simple steps on how to create a new volume. Well, I hope this video helped you. And if it did, please leave a like, comment below, and subscribe. I'll see you next time. This is your host, Jim Odesson, signing out.